Okay, we left in our last video talking about camshafts and we talked about overlap. We found out that the exhaust valve opens down here and she sweeps all the way around and when I get to top dead center my exhaust valve is still open but before my exhaust valve finally closes here my intake valve has already started to open. They're both open at the same time. This is overlap. What is that and why is it important and what are we trying to do here? Well, we're going to talk about what's called column inertia. If you can imagine in your mind's eye a tube Okay, and air is racing down through the tube. Okay, this is part of the intake manifold of your car. At the bottom of the tube is the intake valve. So just imagine at any given moment the air is racing in and all of a sudden the intake valve closes. What's going to happen? Well, the air has been racing in and the very first molecules of air hit the closed door and they start banging up against it and more bang up against them. It looks like a scene right out of the Three Stooges. They're bang, bang, bang. And what really happens here is as they pile up on top of one another right behind that intake valve, they create pressure. Now, what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going along. Our exhaust valve is still open. We're getting ready to close it. In fact, the exhaust valve is beginning to close right here, and it's only open a little teeny bit, and the intake valve opens a little teeny bit, and what happens is some of that pressurized air from behind the intake valve races in as soon as the valve begins to open. It runs across the top of the cylinder, and what it's doing is it's cleaning in there. We still have a little bit of spent air and fuel in there. We'd love to get rid of that. So by having this come racing in right here before the exhaust valve finishes closing, we're flushing. This is referred to as scavenging. We're getting all that out of there. Now the exhaust valve can close. It's nice and clean in there. And now we can let our intake stay open. And as the piston comes down, she's going to draw in a nice fresh mouthful of air. Now again, in high school shop class, they told us that the intake valve closes right here at the bottom. But you see it's still open over here. How can we do that? Well, remember the column inertia. The piston's come all the way. She's come down. The crankshaft goes all around. The piston's down here, but the air is still racing in. It's flowing. It's got motion going with it. It's, it's, it's just dying to go in the hole. So it keeps coming down. So even though the piston is at the bottom and she's just barely beginning to start coming up again, the air is still racing in. And even as the piston does actually begin to develop a little wall of pressure, it's against the piston head down at the bottom of the cylinder, not up here. So we have found that we can actually keep this valve open all the way up to here someplace to let air, more air get in. The more air we get, the more bang we're going to get, and this is going to be able to operate more effectively. So that's why we have this duration of, of overlap here. That's why the intake valve stays open so long. That's what we're doing. Now, why do these cars, especially the, the ones that are all tricked out, why do they have trouble? Well, let's start with um, let's start with what's going on here with our intake. Imagine that the piston's coming down on her intake stroke. She comes in, she comes down, she cranks around down here, but we're not turning thousands of revolutions per minute. I'm only at idle or even cranking speed. What happens? The piston comes down, she gets all the way to the bottom. The air, I don't have that flow of inertia right now. The air is just kind of loping its way on in there. There's nothing else to do. And as the piston begins to go back up, a couple of things happen. First of all, I am going to get no compression at all until this valve closes. So this first part of the stroke at low RPMs is doing nothing. There's no compression to be had. Also, as she's coming up, she's going to begin to try to push this air backwards. She will, at the very least, break the flow, the column, the little bit of column of inertia that I had is gone, and sometimes we'll actually push some of that air back out through the intake valve. That's one of the reasons why these have so much trouble starting, is because they have so little compression at start. The reason is right there. Now, the other thing, imagine again, we're going very, very slow, like a crank speed. Okay, imagine the piston's gone down, there's been a bit of a burn in there, this, we've got extra fuel because they were pumping on the choke trying to get it to go. Okay, the piston comes up, and she's trying to pump out the exhaust, and we still have burning vapors going on in there. The exhaust valve is still open. There's burning vapors in the exhaust, and now my intake valve opens. What's going to happen? There's no flow. There's no inertia to push this out the exhaust system. So what happens? It burns its way out through the intake valve, and the carburetors go bang. That's why when they're trying to start these things, they have so much trouble with them. It's, that's the purpose for it there. And what we're going to see now is the last thing of the things that we talked about that we need to address is lift. In our next video, we're going to talk about lift.